Today in the Nerdy Gritty, is it the end of Hollywood's leading people? What more world is appears inside it? It's another hopeless addict. Well, it makes a man insane. If the drums don't get you, the guitars will. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nerdy Gritty, where we get this delve deep into the details of pop culture i am uh your hunky uh (laughs) leading leading man fox i am your well-known character actor who's been studying this particular role for a year and a half Mm. and you know there's been nothing of me because i've been living in a village in (laughs) in 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 istanbul or whatever (laughs) estonia for 48 months (laughs) Learning the secret ways of the beekeepers there. <laughs> and you're going to get an Oscar I'm and then yes. nobody's going to remember you. <laughs> Nobody will remember. Much like Daniel Day-Lewis. Yes. If you you're going to get Dan- many Oscars, but you're not in the MCU, so nobody <laughs> Nobody cares. knows who you are. Aww. Well, poor, speaking, poor Daniel of, Day-Lewis. speaking of people's identity and knowing who they are, uh, we, we did a whole episode about the Blizzard yeah. con- lawsuit deal yeah. a couple weeks ago up until that point and there's been more of course that's come out since then and maybe we'll, we'll probably won't do another episode about it but today we want to talk about the fact that uh overwatch a blizzard property put out a statement recently yesterday as of recording this yeah. uh stating that they will be changing the name of jesse mccree yeah. uh well okay he's a cowboy character he's, yes. he's a wild west kind of guy it's high noon that's what he does so I just figure one of the easiest ones would be kind of just mash up some famous cowboy characters. Yeah. So I was thinking like Eastwood. Eastwood is literally my next really? one. Really? <laughs> literally my next one is Eastwood. Eastwood. Yes. The problem with that, it's still named after a real person. A real person. person. <laughs> uh, the other one I had was just like either he doesn't have a name or he's literally called like John No Name or something after mm. Clint Eastwood's famous characters from the dollars trilogy that all basically are nameless characters kind of i think that like that's a classic western trope of just the the guy blowing into town and saving the day and then then leaving mysteriously yeah and i think like you know john no name or john john nobody or or i don't know something something that's just mysterious uh i i think a story of that it comes to that in his past, he was kind of an SOB and he did some terrible things. And, <laughs> and then you he just doesn't... keep his name as Jesse McCree. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and he doesn't want to be known by that name anymore. Yeah. And so like, I had just some nicknames here, like lefty. Cause sure. he's, got, he's got one robotic arm, you oh, know? That's true. And, and so just something like that, where canonically that kind of is his, still his real name, but in everything in game, that name is no longer seen ever again, mm, yeah. and he's all always known by like well, this. Nickname. I, I was doing a little bit of reading. I have not played Overwatch. I I I think it seems pretty cool. I've just never played it. Apparently, it has been at least implied by another character in one of the the short, like you know, the the short movies they put out or something that that's not his real name. So there is actually a little oh, bit of a platform for them to take take like it's it's not. I wouldn't be out of complete nowhere for it to be different so that could work if it's like that's actually not my real name anyway i'm gonna go by gun his name is just gun (laughs) gun haver gun haver the 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 popular homestar runner character (laughs) gun haver shooty mcshooty face from the cheat squad i think okay my my last one here involves a little bit of a story okay uh, and one that i would really like to happen here he gets married in universe and then okay. takes the name of somebody else. Ooh, progressive! And so, exactly that. Again, it's kind of the finger in sure, the nose a little bit, yeah. to, to somebody else. And so it could be whatever other character in game. But it, I would suggest somebody that their name is like a code name that His they have. His name is now Jesse Widowmaker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Well, all right. So what's uh, what's what's in the news aside from the uh, Jesse McCree shakeup? Well, remember a while back when I was uh, when I told you that Wendy's came out with their own D and D module. I do, I do remember that. Well, not to be outdone, uh-huh. Arby's is now selling Dungeons and Dragons dice. 
they're just selling dice now? Are they Arby's related? They're I mean, Arby's related. To sure. So here's what it is. A while back, Arby's joked. They they had this D20 set, and it's a clear D20 set. And then there's the 10-gallon hat, the Arby's hat, their mm-hmm. logo. That is in the middle of all these clear dice. Gotcha. And they showed them in this joke video. And Twitter exploded. Yeah. Twitter's like, I want these. Where can I get these? And so no, Arby's has decided. And custom dice are cheap enough to make. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> they decided, sure. Why and so not? Arby's is now selling. You can buy Arby's dice. So what we're getting to is the fact that Wendy's will have the, the mod. Uh, Arby's will have the uh, the dice. <laughs> and Eventually, McDonald's, McDonald's will make some mini figs. You can get you get a Burger King branded map, uh, and then you'll just have it'll just be the the fast food brand D and D universe, and eventually it'll be an official D and D yes like setting setting yeah it's just the, the fast, fast food the ver- fast food averse or what do they call it now the quick it, service averse the yeah, quick servers quick service yeah there you <laughs> there it is. is found quick it quick servers quick servers yes I just I mean it number one it's crazy to me that the turnaround on D and D is this heavy. I remember not oh, 15 yeah. years ago it's become profitable. telling people that I play D&D and then being like, oh, oh. that's weird. Or yeah. it's because I work at a church, like, isn't, it, isn't that satanic? <laughs> Can Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> Just staring at them. <laughs> and so, uh, man, I had to, just recently, I had to tell somebody, you know, is, is it, isn't that satanic? No more than Monopoly. In fact, <laughs> Probably less than Monopoly, Maybe less. actually. <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah. There you go. Uh, D&D, or Arby's-themed D&D dice. <laughs> Ar- they, they, if they really wanted to make them great, they'd make them smell like beef. <laughs> we have these the are, These are my roast beef dice, and they I smell saw, terrible. I found out because on a Discord server I'm a part of, somebody posted the link and said, now I want to buy these and make a D&D character that's a barbarian that's obsessed with meat. Obsessed with meat. <laughs> and he has a horse named Sauce. Yes. Uh, hey, I f- I'm really glad. I found a story... That allows me to talk about my political views, but it is tangentially related to uh, to video games. Okay, all so right. cool. Let's see so, what we got here. <laughs> so in Brooklyn, I believe it was. Yeah, in New York, I think it was specifically in the in Brooklyn. Uh, there was a graffiti artist uh, caught tagging a water tower with a oh with he was three quarters of the way through making like a like a question mark block from okay. Mar- from classic Mario. Well, from Mario. And oh, okay. Yeah. So he was he was just ba- basically painting that on the side of a water tower, and he was found. Like he was caught in the middle of yeah. it. Yeah. And well, let's just say the NYPD overreacted. Oh no. Uh. So this is a single person, uh, up on a water tower. Uh, and I, they... I'm genuinely worried right now because just the, the way our culture is, it could end up being he died. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I, I mean, really want to no, make no, sure. No, of that no, no, no. There's no, no, none of that. No, I want to make sure I'm okay to laugh right now because I was no, no, no. just worried. It is. It no. It's a sad laughter. It's like a wow. That's ridiculous. But it's yeah. It's not one. It's not a downer of a story. Okay. In that way, uh, they sent out a helicopter to keep track of him because the guy basically was caught uh, and refused to come down. He refused right. to come down. It happens. Sure. Yeah. What are you gonna? He's not gonna jump off the thing. What do you? They send a helicopter. They blocked off uh, blocks around this water tower, and they sent apparently dozens of police officers to get him to to try to get him to come down. Send four officers. <laughs> send at one the at the of bottom the of the ladder. <laughs> That's it. You're good. <laughs> right. You're fine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to, get, to get him to take a picture of the guy with his camera <laughs> like i don't understand again this is video tangentially related to video games because he was painting a, a mario, mario block. thing on it yeah. whatever but like maybe they just hate gamers maybe that's what it is the nypd hates gamers it's. I mean, this is New York. I, I'm not asking. Don't they have better things to do? I am telling you, they, they do have better things and to if, do. The, if this is your, I mean, the NYPD's budget is literally billions of dollars because it's obviously a massive place, right? And right. Also, most mil, uh, police budgets are more than they really need to. be. Also, after 9/11, uh, they they trademarked uh, 
FDNY and NYPD. Yep. And so you, if you ever use those, they actually get a cut of that. Well, no, take that system. I'm I'm gonna use it. Uh, <laughs> no, so they sent out dozens of people. Obviously, people were pissed. Like, sure, he was breaking the law. Send two guys at the bottom yeah, of the thing, hundred percent, and I, just chill. I get it. He's breaking the law, trespassing. Sure. You know, sure, I get that. I'm not saying you know enforcing law is a bad thing. I'm saying calm down, yo. <laughs> just let it. Just wait. The, just wait. The overreaction of the police department is a big deal right it's, now. Yes. <laughs> this feels like a real easy one to just be like, you know what? Let's just uh let's just send a a squad car to sit at the base. The dude's got two choices. Come down that ladder <laughs> or come down not that ladder. <laughs> Cut one. And either way, you're gonna catch him. <laughs> come down that ladder or never come down. No, just he could, die up there. He could come down. Not I mean, yeah, that's true. He could jump. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the he's not going anywhere afterward. But, but apparently, it resulted in I think it was like, yeah. Uh, let's see. They sent a helicopter in after him. Eventually, he'd eventually decided to climb down at one thirty. This was twelve hours after he was first found. So he was probably up there for a good thirteen because he had already mostly finished his 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 graffiti tag, his graffito. So, uh, good job, New York Police Department, but not really. Okay, okay. Uh, so, what are you? <laughs> Let's what are talk you, about what we've been up yeah, to. What have you been up to, Fox? Uh, been obviously watching a couple movies because that's who I am as yep. a person. That's my personality. Uh, hold on, I need to actually go back to where I was. There we go. Uh, I watched a, a, two movies this weekend. Uh, one of them, the first one I'll talk about is Respect, which is the Aretha Franklin right. biopic. Hey, do you remember when I just said it was a Aretha Franklin biopic? Yeah. That's what it was. It was exactly what you'd expect. It was starting when she's young, tracks her career as she gets older. She has, you know, uh, her down, mo- like her, her like triumph over her. Right. The, the adversity. The, she, she struggled with like alcoholism and stuff. Like, yeah, just lot. you know, it, it's essentially a biopic. You're, you're rooting for a person, but yeah. they're real. And it was fine. It was exactly what you'd expect. And if you're interested in Aretha Franklin and her life story, then and you don't want to read a biography, then this movie's I don't I don't know how accurate it is. It's not something that I was interested in learning. But yeah, yeah. I uh, also I only have a couple of movies. I haven't been done, been doing much this week. <laughs> sure. Um, but I watched and you've talked about this before. I watched Guns Akimbo. Guns Akimbo with uh, Daniel Radcliffe, with Harry Potter. Yeah, and. Uh, I didn't. It wasn't very good. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. that being. It was just like, uh. I, I, like I would say, I, I, I don't want to say that if I disliked it, but I, I don't want to watch it again. That's for sure. It, it was. It, he did fine. Uh, he played a decent enough actor. There's a weird point in the movie when he suddenly becomes good at guns. Yeah, and that was weird. But oh, and then then the the joke part for my wife and I was that the girl hunting him had automatic weapons and could not land a single round on him, <laughs> but she could like through in the middle of the eyes, any other, every human other being, person, everybody is dead else. Immediately. Yes. But she just could it's not so get even close to him. And it was, yeah, it, it absolutely removed you from the fiction. Sure. The, the cinematography and the editing was really haphazard. And I know that was intentional. Chaotic. Yeah. yeah it's chaotic, supposed to be a chaotic movie, but it didn't fit, uh, in the same way that you know, I've talked about Birds of Prey before. The same way that kind of fit the narrative yes. of the film. Yeah, this was trying to fit the narrative of the film at all as well, but more than that, it just felt chaotic and tough to watch. And uh, there was a lot of weird video game references. Like yeah. I understand that he was a video game dev, but that didn't play much into the narrative at all. So right. the, whole, the whole video game thing was weird to me, and just. It wasn't a great movie. Yeah. yeah, it was disappointing. I think I remember it just being like trying to say, "Look how crazy this is." Yeah, and that last five minutes, yep. like, okay, it's crazy. What else you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, other movie I saw this weekend was The Protege. Oh no! Wait, wait. I know this one. This is oh, this is uh, Samuel L. Jackson He's and in Maggie the- Q. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, Bird Birdman slash Batman. Uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Eh. Yeah, it was it was pretty nothing. It was basically uh, the standard like I'm an assassin, but I raised this young girl to be an assassin. Right. And then it's essentially uh, 
let's try to kill this person or get revenge and stuff. That's what the trailers look like to me. Yeah. And I, I feel like it looked like <clears throat> that and I'm not surprised that it is that, but it's yeah. one that I still want to see actually. Like it just uh, yo, like a wait, fun action yeah. when it comes on, a, uh, when it's on a uh, streaming service you already have, then yeah, watch it. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's a whatever action movie. Uh, I watch, and this is the one that I do want to talk about for uh, a little bit, is Reminiscence. Ah, I haven't watched it yet. The new Hugh Jackman yeah. film. Here's what I'll say. It's getting moderate to negative reviews. I really enjoyed it. Did you? It was a... You a, are a big fan of... Um, noir. Well, yeah, and Christopher Nolan. Yes. And it looks like Inception, but not Inception to me. Yeah, ish. As far as like the kind of tone and the, yeah. the, the, the playing with I guess, no, I guess that's true. The with playing memory. with reality kind of goes, yeah, a little bit. It, it did not do that as much as well, sure, you sure. expected. That's so, what Chris Nolan does. Right. And so I, I did appreciate that they had a lot of opportunity to try and say, that wasn't real and whatever else. Uh, and they, they didn't they reined do that. It in. That's good. Yeah. That's and good. I, I really appreciated that. This is a sci-fi noir film yeah. that more than anything, it was trying so hard to be Blade Runner. It was really? trying so hard to be Blade Runner and ended up a little bit more Total Recall. And so... And that's a bad thing no it's not oh and that's i point. love total recall I, I well not total recall arnold schwarzenegger total recall oh, uh um, so colin farrell I yeah think was, so then yeah. oh no <laughs> so it, it took itself very seriously ah. very seriously very a la blade runner okay. and but i think hugh jackman had a great performance in this i think that it was compelling and i love the mystery of it there was a really really good mystery that ended up coming to a satisfying ending i think All right. and i really enjoyed it i thought it was a great film i think it's being underrated right now uh i really recommend if you have the streaming service go watch reminiscence i especially again if you are a noir fan this hits that on the head really well and definitely has that you know struggling investigator feeling to it and way fun i really like reminiscence yeah so. i'll probably watch it when i have some free time at some point yeah all right well that's all i got it's a shorter one today. yeah it is let's let's get down to the old nerdy gritty Hey, before we do that, we just want to let you know that you've listened to an edited version of the Nerdy Gritty before this. Everything after this is unedited. Uh, that means that there's a little bit of the content that we've cut down to make it a little more palatable, a little bit easier listening for your average listener. But we have what's called the Director's Cut of the Nerdy Gritty over on our Patreon page. So if you become one of our patrons at the second tier or higher, you get access to the Director's Cut, which includes 15, 20, sometimes like half an hour worth of extra content that we've cut down. Again... After this whole episode is what it is. Our main topic is never edited. But for our, our true fans, the hardcore... Uh, the ones we really love. Yeah, the hardcore nerdy gridians, ner nerdy... You guys who like our the, podcast. The listeners. <laughs> uh, we have that option for you. So we'd really appreciate your support at patreon.com slash Fox. If that is not something you can do, we totally understand. Word of mouth is huge for us, though. And the ability to go out and just tell people is still very useful for us. So please, tell your friends about the Nerdy Gritty. Go get the word out there. But now, for real, let's get down to the Nerdy Gritty. So recently, an article by Jonathan Dean from the Sunday Times came out. Uh, it was an interview with Matt Damon. And it, essentially, the title of the article is... Is Matt Damon the last of Hollywood's leading men? No. That's it. Thanks well, for guys, thanks everybody. for listening. Bye. Save games. No. <laughs> now, the article itself is mostly an interview of Matt Damon. Because he just had a movie coming yeah, out. Yeah, and, and conversations with him. But in the article, Matt Damon laments about sort of the culture of film these days and acting these days. And so uh, the Sunday Times, whoever is behind the social media side of the Sunday Times, created a Twitter thread. Asking the question, is the age uh, is the age of the movie star coming to an end? And so that's what, kind of what we're going to want to talk about today is, is the idea of a leading person. So it, in the past, you'd say Tom Hanks stars in and you want to see it because it's the new Tom yeah. Hanks movie. It's this leading man who we want to see because he Popular or she actor, is there or that and they, person is there. They're always in great movies. So. Right. So, or they make the movie great. But, and this is something that uh, we're going to talk about more later, by, on the contrary, the 
whoever, again, whoever's behind the Sunday Times thread, they are saying now it's characters that lead it. Now you want to see a movie because it's the new Iron Man movie, because it's the new Batman movie. It's now character led, no longer actor or actress or act, acting person led. So when you just hear this initially, Fox, when you get this idea of a leading man in general, like, is this something that you agree with that this has been a thing in the past? Is it dying? Do you even like agree with the premise of this? Uh, I mean, I I understand where they're coming from. I do believe that to a certain extent, the idea of a Hollywood leading man or leading woman is like not really what it used to be. I mean, we are fairly young. We have been alive for the not much of the Hollywood age. But I feel like at a certain point, yeah, it's the new like Clark Gable movie. You know, like when you had like it didn't matter what the movie was. It's got that guy in it that you really like. And that can still be true, of course. If there's a movie that, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves is in, I'm probably going to go see it. Right, right. Uh, But I do think that it's largely a product of, like, products of brands and IPs becoming such a reliable thing that I do think they have a point that, I mean, we can see that with Batman. There have been like five different Batman and three of them would have been in the last 10 years. Yes. And they still do really well every time. Yep. And I still want, I'm looking forward to the next Batman, uh, mostly because it's a Batman movie. I also like Robert Pattinson as an actor. I think he's a, a, well, a very good actor. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to it because I like the character of Batman and the universe he inhabits and the kind of stories they tell with that character. So I, I can see where both are coming from. I don't know if I would say that the era of the leading actor the you know the star is over i i mean there are several people that i think are still just box off uh, you know margot robbie's in a movie people are gonna go see it like i think there are still the like, rock that's the, the one rock. to me that like he he to me so this yeah, is my Vin like Diesel. i want to throw this right back at them well, and be maybe. like dwayne johnson dwayne... If he is in a movie he could star in tooth fairy which he did <laughs> which he did and it would still be a blockbuster that's a classic hit. tradition of the wrestler strongman being in a quote-unquote you know Effeminate. children's yeah, yeah. Let's give him fairy wings look how funny but we have these actors today that are still carrying so much star power yes. so much clout right yes they are also in much more action oriented and not dramatic films but these guys are still huge these people are still huge you know actors and actresses like gal gadot yeah you know she can be in anything and it's going to be great it's going to draw a crowd there are going to be plenty of of of, of actors and actresses who will draw a crowd because of who they are yeah i don't i don't know if it's the extent that what it used to be but it's still going to happen here's what i will say though and here's where i think i kind of agree with them is i think that hollywood is more comfortable with typecasting than it used to be hmm. instead really? of looking we talked about daniel day lewis a little bit earlier yeah instead of looking back to daniel day lewis and saying this man can play anything we need him to play sure but he's asking X amount of dollars and X is a lot amount of dollars for us to get Daniel Day Lewis for this perfect, you know, because he can be whatever he, we, he, he, he was we, such a good actor for a, like that. He got to pick whatever movie he was in. Right. It didn't matter if you wanted him or not. I think these <laughs> days, Hollywood is much more comfortable saying we have this very specific role who can embody that role. Perfect. Whether or not they're a good actor or actress, hmm. Can they embody this role really well? And I, I think my first example of this is going to be, I already mentioned her Gal Gadot, where she is an incredible Wonder Woman. She does this great job sure. of balancing kind of this sort of naivete and innocence with bold confidence. True and heroism. Yeah, true heroism. She's not great. Other Everything else like... I've seen her in is just like, oh, okay. Like right. it's, yeah, but that, that role is what like she is defined that role. A- absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, she does incredible in it. And I think there are enough famous people these days, there are enough actors these days that Hollywood has the uh, uh, ability, instead of saying, we need an incredible actor to play this role, they can say, we need somebody who embodies this role, who is this person sure. already. Yeah. And then we just cast them in that role and just you be you, please. Be you. To and, a, yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- that article specifically, this is probably something we're going to get to later, but it talks about Iron Man and yeah. Robert Downey Jr., And, uh, like it would have been the weirdest thing in the world if another actor was playing Iron Man 
not only because of the MCU and it's like continuity and like wanting to see the same thing, but they had other actors play different roles in that, that were less take that were less strange. Like they had a different Hulk. They had a different roadie, but if you had not somebody who was not Robert Downey Jr. Playing that character, you would have been like this, this isn't, this is weird. Like that's not Iron Man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You would think it's like a plot point. Like it's some kind of weird clone or something. I I think, what a lot of the problem is here is that the MCU specifically yes. has done something that has changed film forever. It has shifted, yeah, a lot. Where, you know, people mock the superhero movie these days, particularly... Some people do, the, yeah. Yeah. The, Martin Scorsese. Particularly... That's who we're talking about. A, and a little bit Matt Damon. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's just jealous, even though he was in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Cameo to and Ragnarok. will be in the no, new Thor Will he really? Yeah, the the actor versions are coming back apparently for a little cameo or something. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love it. But it's the uh, see now you got me spaced now, <laughs> now that I've learned that I've what was I talking about? Yeah, oh, pe- people make fun of the superhero. The, yeah, but what they have done is they've taken a genre that is typically the dumb action blockbuster superhero movie and made it quality. Or yeah, or yeah, made you care. Yeah, and and so I don't think the argument now is that the leading men or women are the problem. It's that hey, you've made stories worth watching instead of people worth sure. watching, and I think that's where this argument falls apart. Is that it's not that we don't care about the actors or actresses anymore. It's that we care about the story now. Sure, one hundred percent. You have created good narrative and if you can continue to create good narrative we will continue to consume this uh, in fact i would probably lend this more to um harry potter yeah okay than, yeah, than yeah, the yeah. mcu where these movies continually mo- continually made more and more money with every single movie that right. came out because people cared about the story people liked yeah they, they got to watch all the same actors playing the same roles and it just felt like a continuous story were Daniel Radcliffe, uh, Rupert Grint, or Emma Watson particularly phenomenal actors or actresses? No. Do they do that whenever they're in a movie nowadays? Does it mean that movie's going to make five hundred million dollars? Absolutely not. Nope. Guns Akimbo. We already right. talked about sure. that, right? But Thunderpants uh, is apparently a movie. That's a movie with Rupert Grint <laughs> in it when he was very early on, like <laughs> first or second Harry Potter era. Oh wow! And uh, tangent, but it's literally about a kid who um farts a lot <laughs> and rupert grint plays it's a very charming movie hence thunderpants i yes. get it, I get it. Okay, but rupert okay. grint plays like a boy genius who learns how to harness the fart power yes and spoilers <laughs> um the kid literally farts his way to space in a rocket ship yes <laughs> it's actually Brilliant. i'm making it sound like a goof like a meme but it is a wonderful charming movie it's, anyway, watch Thunderpants. It's Pants. just another superhero movie. It's just Fox. another <laughs> ugh, another super. That'd be a great superhero. But really, what is happening here is we care more about narrative than people, than the actual people behind the narrative. Sure. And I think I like that better. I really do think that's more uh, lending greater to the art. I, I Okay. I'd agree with you on a certain... Uh, the I really think the culprit here is that we like what's familiar. Not necessarily what is great narrative because there are Marvel movies that made a lot of money, but not necessarily the best narrative. And there are actors from these movies, like actors from the Marvel movies that are in other better movies that don't do anywhere near as well. So I don't think narrative is really what the like narrative is obviously a draw. You want to see the continuation of the story. Like they did an incredible job with building this thing up to end game. And then it just paying off in such a huge way. But, like, there are other movies that these actors have been in that uh, are inc- much better than any Marvel movie that don't get the draw, even though the narrative is better. Like, mm. what, what's the guy who plays Thanos? What's his name? Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin. He was in a movie called No Country for Old Men. It's a Coen Brothers movie. It's one of probably my favorite movies. And it's better than any Marvel movie. But it's not Marvel, so it doesn't have that draw, even though it has... Uh, you know, better uh, narrative. Yeah, a, or a better narrative, or even Josh Brolin, who was a big part of one of the of a couple of the biggest Marvel movies. So let's stick with that argument for a second here, because the the person tweeting this uh, shared a graphic okay. about the top fifteen movies in 1997. So let's and here's the point: let's count franchises in this. Franchises, things that have been 
uh, that were already established franchises before this. Titanic. I mean, the idea was there, but yeah, it's not, not part a of a media franchise. Lost World Jurassic Park. That's one. There's one. He's Men back. in Black. The first one. So that does so, not count. Well, it, again, it's based on comics, but... Yes, you're but right. That was not Movie a franchise. wise, yeah. it was not a franchise. Tomorrow Never Dies, James Bond, established franchise. Yes. It's a uh, bad one. Air Force One, As Good As It Gets, Liar Liar, My Best Friend's Wedding, The Fifth Element, The Full Monty, Bean. Bean? Her- yeah, Sean Bean, like Mr. Bean. Oh, not Sean Bean, not sorry. Not Sean Bean, different Bean. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Yeah. Hercules, I think we could count that as an established Disney. It's a I Disney. Guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Face Off, Batman and Robin. So there's a Batman. Hey, there's another one. Goodwill Hunting. So that's four of the top. Wait, you 15. haven't? You're not watching the Goodwill Hunting cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> so the top 15 movies in 2019, <laughs> all franchise movies: Avengers Endgame, yeah. The Lion King, Frozen 2, Spider-Man: Far From Home, Captain Marvel, Toy Story 4, Star Wars: The Rise of St- Skywalker, Joker, Aladdin, <laughs> Jumanji: The Next Level, Fast and the Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw's. <laughs> Uh, multiple Shaws in this one. Actually, there were multiple Shaws, so that that counts. How to Train Your Dragon: Hidden World, Maleficent, and then two Chinese movies, like made in China movies. One was The Mermaid. Uh, um, I don't know. I cannot pronounce these sure, okay. the titles to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bottom line is thirteen of 13, the fifteen. The vast majority of them were established franchises. Two of them, the only reason they weren't established franchises is because they were made in China. They are not Hollywood movies. Right. And so his point being, people don't care about quality cinema anymore. They care about familiarity, kind of like you're saying. They want an established franchise that's already there. Do you agree with that? I mean, that's probably true in generalities, 100%. But there are still, like, uh, Batman, uh, well, no, Justice League. Justice League, the first one. Right. The even worse one. <laughs> uh, only made, quote unquote, only made $600 million. That's a lot of money. I'm not going to say that's not a lot of money. <laughs> what I'm saying is it was far lower than people wanted. Right. Because it wasn't good. If it was better, it would have made more money. And so I do think that people still want quality, but they are also more lenient and more willing to go with established what, what I recognize already. And that makes sense to me. I mean, that, that makes sense to me. Uh, but yes, it is it is a case of, like, the the actors who are in it aren't necessarily what the huge, the biggest draw is anymore. Right. And I would also agree. I think that's just true of humans in general. That's why nostalgia is so popular. Oh, 100%. It's why that's fashion. That's the point of reminiscence, and I've only seen, yeah. the, I've only seen the trailer. <laughs> Uh, it's why uh, uh, fashion is cyclical. Sure. It's just this whole mindset. I've got of, my high waisted uh, jeans on right now. That's right. Yeah, you do. You look great, dude. You look. You really do. Thank you. <laughs> but it's just this mindset of what we know we are more comfortable with. Yeah. Hey, my question is: Is that a problem, though? And uh, there are still some things taking chances out there. Reminiscence was a unique film. Definitely homage yeah. to other ones. Sure. There, there are still some things taking chances out there, but for the most part, we really seem to be relying on familiarity. Is that a problem? Do we need to get out of that? Uh, Yeah, I think so. That's one of the biggest like pluses to having a subscription to a movie theater. Hmm. Movie theaters are still probably on their way out. It's probably going to take still a good long oh, while, yeah. but it allows you to not have to worry about whether or not you're going to like it before you when you consider what movie you're gonna see hmm. i mean there's some that you know it's not like you have to see everything but like if you've paid 21 dollars and see four movies one a week you've saved half of your money already yeah and oh no one of those wasn't my favorite or one of them that i had no i did not know about any i didn't i knew nothing about it was excellent yeah and now I've got something new. You know, like I, I took a quote unquote chance. It lessens that chance. And so this is my pitch here. Hey, subscribe to a movie theater. <laughs> or if you have like a like a streaming service, uh watch something that's that you've never heard of before. Like that I think that's a that's a really good thing to do because it also will support probably lesser known maker uh, developers and stuff. And- I will say I think that we're actually you know, I, I- I asked my question to spark conversation, but my actual opinion is that I think we're balancing that fairly well. Oh, yeah. I think something like Joker 
is also is using an established mm-hmm. franchise as a launching point, but then giving you something entirely new. Yes. And it was well, spectacular, spectacular. Different. For it. Yeah. yeah. Entirely different. Yeah. And it was incredible. I, I think that um, Doctor Strange was similar. Just it was taking a chance and it was a superhero movie, but a lot more about surrealism and, and sure and things to like a that. certain extent. Yeah. Right. But and it. You know what? It's not my favorite Marvel movie, but you take chances. That that is yeah, that I think is the real like what the opportunity is. Okay, I think a really great example of this is Cloverfield uh 13 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. 10 Cloverfield Lane. 10 Cloverfield Lane. 13 Cl- 13, 13 Mockingbird, Mockingbird Lane. Lane. Yeah. Uh 10 Cloverfield Lane. It was I guess it I mean it was in the Cloverfield quote unquote universe whatever. But the it, Clovers, the Cloververse, uh, it. But it basically kind of didn't trick people, right? But it kind of used that established. Hey, I know what that is. I like it to give you something very different. And sure, it technically is related. Whatever, who cares? That's not the point. It was a wonder. It was an excellent movie. It was a really great story. It was very tense, and it just kind of like I yeah. And Joker did that. I mean, like uh, Logan did that. Mm, I think even mm. the Dark Knight did that to a certain extent, even yeah. though it was very representative of the of the superheroes about. Or in the opposite direction, uh, Thor Ragnarok did that. Sure, sure. Where, yeah, and I think that that's what needs to happen more. I mean, I've been saying this for a long time. Marvel needs to start going in different directions with their yeah. movies, and they have been a little bit with like the TV shows. With WandaVision, for sure, is the big one mm. where it's like this is something new. Like now you have this opportunity to not only make a lot of money off your established recognizable brands, but also then to be creatively and narratively, uh, uh, um, you know, new, uh, uh, unique, or just like just to, to branch out into different directions and kind of flip things on their head a little bit. And I hope that continues to happen more because I don't think the trend of people liking, like wanting to go after what they already know is going to go any way, anywhere anytime soon well and let's be honest when we get the most artistic the the most you know uh, fantastic art films out there they don't get not that many people watch them anyway they might be the highest piece nobody watched the english patients you know back in the 90s ah good timely preference yeah well that's my point is nobody watched it then in the same way that not that many people watched uh three billboards over uh um hey that was a great movie i'm that but i'm sure it was it was but not that many people saw it sure it it didn't have the box office draw of whatever marvel movie competed with it that year and my point being quote unquote competed that was true in the 90s with the english patient as true as it is today sure. with three yeah. billboards. And so we're not, nothing's really changing. What I think what's really changing is that the, the summer blockbusters are actually becoming something of substance. They yeah, weren't just to a certain extent, check yeah. your, check your brain out and watch live free or die hard, you know, hey. check your brain at the door yeah, and okay. watch that. <laughs> now there's some substance to them and they're becoming better. I, th- I think what's also good to remember is that there are always good movies and bad movies. Yes. That's Always true. and forever. And, I mean, this is relevant with Martin Scorsese's bad take on superhero <laughs> movies, but, like, people decried Jaws and Star Wars as the death of real cinema when mm. they came out. The invention of the blockbuster that basically Spielberg did uh, uh, was like, oh, real movies are over. This is all people want to see. And Jaws is now lauded as one of the best movies of all time. Right. Rightfully so. It's a excellent oh, it's thriller. So good. Like, it's very yeah, tension. good. The tension. It yes. Is it's beautiful. so good. And so, I mean, I, I do want, I don't want to just say, oh, boomers. But at a certain point, <laughs> like, Matt Damon can say whatever. Things change, man. It's like, it's like a comedian complaining that he can't be funny anymore. Like, no, things just change, and now you're not funny because people don't like your humor. Right. It's it's just how the world goes. You got to change or die is kind of is how it is. So that brings me to the last point and the last thing that I want to talk about in here, and it's a little bit tangential, but not a lot because the point that's being made here is – actually, I'll quote the, the tweet here. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is a leading man, but his Iron Man could be played by almost anyone with wit. The character is more important to audiences than the actor. So essentially saying that this was Robert the clickbait Downey, title. Yes, the, this was the clickbait, the clickbait. one. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. was not the selling point. Iron Man was the selling point. 
anybody could have been behind there who anybody with wit could have been behind there and it would have been just as popular just as good what do you think about in 2008 absolutely true before the movie came out 100 percent, i agree robert downey jr was not an actor really anymore he wasn't one that was up on the front state like he had had a lot of like i mean this goes into why the movie the character became great but he was not like big famous actor man like he was a famous actor but he wasn't tom hanks Right. But then he embodied this character so well, partially because he is a good actor and also because he has a life story that not mirrors. <laughs> He's not a weapons dealer, but he has like certain things in his past that reflect Tony Stark and m- allowed him to create this character r- to this this beloved icon yeah. where you're literally crying in the theater 13 years later or 12 years later when that character is no longer there right right like yeah i agree that if it was somebody else if it was johnny freaking depp it would have been the same like uh iron man i don't know what this is but as soon as that movie came out and people realized like this character is excellent then it was you could not have anybody but robert downey jr he became the draw like he is he and especially his interplay with uh, with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow are the best parts of the sequels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The sequels are fine, I think, narratively also, but I, I they are still the best parts of those. Oh, movies. They got great chemistry, a lot yeah, of good witty dancer there. Yeah, their, their it, character, like the 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 things they go through and the, how their relationship evolves, is excellent all the way up until Endgame. Like, yeah. So if you had take, it's it's a weird combination of both. Where it's sure maybe beforehand it could have been anybody, but after he became that character you couldn't have anybody else play him i and i actually part of that and is why i'm gonna all around say i disagree with you really because what's something what i think what the writer of this article doesn't know and what i don't know if you remember is in 2008 iron man wasn't very popular oh yeah iron man was a c-list maybe c-list is a great way he was a c-list superhero to all the a-listers out there and especially in the movie realm yeah there was no iron man movie before this right you know spider-man had been tried before captain america the really big ones were the x-men you know wolverine and all them there were the big names in marvel comics but iron man was just like Oh yeah, some robot I know, guy. Mate. I know I, Iron he's Man. He's a robot, right? Yeah, he's got. He, he wears that suit. That yeah, and that's yeah. it. Robert Downey Jr. gave life to this character in a way that I think some other people could have. Oh, one hundred percent. Yes, I, anybody with wit. No, I. If Johnny Depp were to play that role. I don't think it would have been the same. And I don't know that it would have kicked off the MCU. Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, that's pretty appropriate for the Marvel universe right now, but what if that had happened? (laughs) Who knows? It could have been great. Could have been terrible. And everything would be different nowadays. I I think we have to tip our hat to Johnny, not Johnny Depp, to Robert Downey Jr. For creating, not creating, but to to establishing, creating the the, the foundation. This character that nobody knew. To the Marvel Universe in its entirety. Yes, yeah. If Iron Man had flopped entirely, then nobody would have cared about the second flop after that, the Incredible Hulk, what so many people forget is canonically Dang, yeah. part of the... If that was the, the first one, nothing would have happened after yeah. that. And it would have just been... Another I, Iron Man Hulk flopped, movie. Hulk flopped, and the whole thing would have fallen apart. Maybe Captain America? Nah, probably wouldn't have gotten off the ground. No. And it was because Iron Man 2 would have been after that. Oh, that's true. Captain America wasn't until after Iron Man 2. Yeah. And so, but Robert Downey Jr. gave life to this character in such an incredible way. He crushed it. He was not a leading man at that point. Right. But he became one. Right. And deservedly so. And I think that we need to tip our hat to him and not try to discredit his talents of of doing this, you know? Yeah. We have evidence in the incredible hulk of a marvel movie that flopped hardcore yep. and nobody cared about it ever again until the the post credit scene when iron man shows oh, up yeah, it's iron man. It's him. <laughs> I, so i think what we're getting to is the fact that both still exist yeah but maybe now the shift is that the things that we recognize the established franchises create the leading because i think the same thing might be able to be said for uh wolverine for logan yeah because that was basically Hugh Jackman's first role. Yeah. And then 17 years later, if anybody had been Wolverine uh, before like before he died in the movie, like it would have been the weirdest thing. That yeah. was who he was. That was his character, even more so than like Professor X. Like yeah. 
And so I think maybe now the, the, the balance has shifted to where, sure, maybe the franchise and the, the, the recognizability is more important, but the leading characters are still like super, like they still exist and just maybe come second. Maybe it's a shifting of the chicken and an egg kind of thing. In fact, the more that I think about it, something that I've lamented a lot recently and something that I think shows that I'm kind of okay with the leading person not being a thing anymore is the amount of films that have gone straight to streaming service that have ended up being B list mediocre films, but star Angelina Jolie yeah, or star Matt Damon or star Chris Pratt. You know, they they try to create these leading person films. Yeah. 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 And the films aren't great. Let's, let's make the tomorrow war. It's not good, but it's got Chris Pratt. Exactly. You're like, it's still not good. I don't want to watch it. And and I think that's good that people are starting to recognize. I don't care that it has Chris Pratt. Your movie's not good, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't enjoy it. Like, Hey, Chris Pratt's great. He's a good person. I I love him as star Lord. I love him in, in parks and rec, whatever else you want to say. He's a wonderful actor, but yeah, but that's a bad film and I don't want to watch it. So nope. And I think that's a good thing. I think that, a lot of this is establishing the the importance of narrative art, sure, and yeah. and the human experience, you know, in in that with it. So one hundred percent, yeah. I I am not afraid of the death of the leading person. Oh, that's fine. And I, it's I just am, a new evolution. In the, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what more in fact, narrative. I'm gonna kill arcs. them all myself. Yes, Matt. On that, you're note. next. <laughs> nah, Stillwater was good. Well, you get okay, a pass for okay. now. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. Let us know what you think uh, about the leading actor or actress, the leading person in a film. Is it something that we need to stick around and keep honoring, or is it something that we can go ahead and let die? Let us know what you think about narrative, film in general. Just let us know your opinions, about your thoughts, about our thoughts, about your thoughts. Yeah, that's right. I want to say thank you to Granger for the use of our theme song. Okay. All my friends have Wi-Fi, and so do most of my neighbors, off of the album Dear Sam. Uh, it's a good album. And a good band. Check and, out. And, and hey, good people. Good pe- Well, nah, they're okay. <laughs> uh, go check out our YouTube channel. We're playing Everhood right now, which I've, we've described before. It's basically uh, an Undertale plus a guitar hero. And if you want to hear me get angry at m- myself, <laughs> uh, then uh, watch our more recent episodes because it got really difficult. Um, also, next week, uh, I-, I think we can do this for sure because next week is Pax next yeah. this weekend as of the, that's the plan i'm there's still part of me that it's gonna like washington's gonna come out with a mandate fall apart or something right yeah, at the end that it, would be unfortunate but as of right now our next episode which we don't do this very often uh will probably be a from pax episode yep. we'll talk about the games we played we'll talk about kind of what the con was you know this is the first huge video game convention that's happening in person since covid started everything else is still like gamescom is this is literally right now and it's still online in fact this is supposed to release the monday that we're at pax no no monday it's before. not monday before monday before okay yeah good, good. our next episode yep. will release the last day yes. of pax we'll, we'll so we're gonna be talking okay. about like i think it'll be interesting to see how this goes and what yeah. it's like well maybe we'll talk to some people there about like their feelings about being at a convention again and yeah. should be interesting. So tune in next week to hear some, some cool uh, stuff from the convention from PAX. Uh, thanks again for listening guys. And always remember that we love you. That's true. Also saved game, save lies. Also true. Bye. Save lies. I'm, I'm going to stop the podcast now. Good idea. My voice is on.